Uh, looking forward to that. What have you? Where have you? What have you been doing? Heading up to Colts camp still a lot? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go up there today. They got the. Uh, uh, excuse me. They're practicing against the Detroit Lions here for the next two days. So that that should tell us a little bit more about what they've got. Uh, you know, I'm curious to see, you know, how Matt Pryor uh, and Bernard Raymond at left tackle hold up against real competition. I'm con- I'm interested to see what the wide receivers and the tight ends do. You know, they're going up against a different group. So I, I think I think you you learn a lot. Um, you learn a hell of a lot more going to these dual practices than you do in normal practice. So uh, I'm looking forward to that, actually. And the weather's going to be nice. So, You know, and that brings up a great question or point. You know, colleges obviously have no preseason of any kind. I it, I wonder if they if practicing against another team that you don't play, uh, not in your conference, something like that, would be something that colleges should should start doing. You know that that's an interesting point. I, I wonder from from a, from a uh, uh, liability uh, point of view uh, whether they want to. Um, I you know I don't I don't know the answer to that. Um, you know maybe why not? I guess I, I I don't know what would what would stop them. You know if you want to get a get a school in here. Uh, a couple of practices because you're right. They jump right into the season, especially, uh, you know, IU o- opening the season with a big 10 game. Uh, Jim Harbaugh is a character on here that uh, on the comments board. And while making this probably a lot in jest, what is the pulse? Cause I, I'm not, don't cover the Colts as much. What is the pulse with Colts fans and Frank Reich? I, I, I've not seen it or heard it to be bad, but it seems, is it middle, middle of the road or better than well, middle of the road? Uh, you know, this is something that I think I'm going to address in my column uh, that I write today for tomorrow's publication. Is that I, I, I don't think the clock is ticking yet on Ballard and Reich in terms of them being on the hot seat. But I think the way this season goes will go a very long way toward determining their status heading into next season. Because if they fail to win the uh, AFC South for the eighth, for the ninth consecutive year, and it would be the sixth consecutive year under this regime, I think that that's going to open some eyes. You know, they finally have a quarterback who they think, uh, look, he's not going to replace Andrew Luck, but. He's certainly an upgrade on what they've had. Um, so, yeah, this is going to be a very important season, I believe, for Reich and, and, and for Ballard. Um, Ballard, I think, has done a great, really good job of building this team from the ground up, um, coming in when he did after Ryan Grixon. But there are still some issues here that I think, I think these are self-imposed wounds. You know, they, they've spent the second fewest dollars in their wide receiver room of any team in the NFL, second or third third least. And you can see it. You can see it. You get what you pay for. And so I'm curious moving forward uh, whether they are going to go out and get themselves a veteran at some point. Um, I don't think it's going to be T.Y. Um, but, yeah, I'm really curious to see how the guys look these next two days. I think it's going to go a long way toward telling us what they have in the wide receiver room and in the tight end room. Yeah, it sounds uh, a lot of similarities there between the Colts and Indiana, where the Colts are not coming off nearly as bad of a season and a, and a letdown season, but uh, both coaches are kind of get are in that same area of they are not you know Tom Allen's out on the hot seat, but this season will determine whether or not he is heading in the, or, or going to there or not. Right. I, I agree. Uh, look, I, I think Tom Allen's the right guy for this job. I think the absolute worst thing that Indiana can do is panic because they've always panicked in the past. Uh, and they've done it with basketball coaches. They've done it with, with football coaches. But when you're, when you're Indiana and you are the losingest school in the history of college football, you can't be jumping around every couple of years. You know, you're not going to get, um, you know, a, a major, major name coach in here. 
I think Tom Allen's the right guy, but they've got to get it right this year. And I'll be, I'm going to go down there on Friday and talk to Allen, but I'm, I'm, I'm really curious about the quarterback situation. I mean, what have, what have you seen so far? With uh, Tuttle and is it, is it Basilak? Is that how he pronounces his name? Yeah, Connor Basilak, the uh, transfer from Missouri, former SEC freshman or co-freshman of the year. Uh, not a lot. <laughs> they haven't <laughs> let us see. Uh, uh, to be honest with you, uh, I, I in talks. He, one day you hear one thing, and then uh, yesterday, I, I the last time I was able to go, I still didn't get to see anything. But I talked to the guys from the Hoosier dot com. And they said, well, on deep balls, Connor was underthrowing everybody and, and Tuttle was overthrowing everybody. So well, that's timing something, that's something to look forward to. Yeah, ti well, timing's just not there yet. Um, but I'm thinking, you know, I, I think I, I'm just going uh, from a fan standpoint, uh, as far as using what I know and what I think, and what I know is this offense has to be somewhat dynamic this year. They have to do things to be quick hitting. They can't rely on a line that was porous as a sponge last year. Uh, just can't do this. So that, so that tells me they're going to have to have some movement, a quarterback that can is mobile. And I think Basilak is much more of that uh, right. when you compare those two quarterbacks. Um, but it all has to work. Tuttle has got, you know, he's been here for a couple of years, so mm -hmm. there's that you've got to get past. Um, so I, I think it's going to be a tight race. And we've seen Tom Allen has really always deferred to veterans. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, it's hard to guess. But this year, it se seems like he is completely turning it over to Walt Bell. He's mm -hmm. focusing on the defense. So, um I think that I think that Bazelak ends up being the starter. But that's only because I'm thinking that he's more mobile, and they're yeah. going to need a quarterback that can do right. that. Because their so. O line, their O line is still a big question. Right. Obviously. Exactly. Uh, so that's like just my fact, take. I like the fact that Tom Allen has taken back over the defense. You know, yes. I, you know, I, I think that's that's a smart move. I, I think at the time when he decided to back away. I thought it was a good move at the time. It made sense. But I think where this program is right now, they need their top guy running that de that four two five defense and getting it back to where it was a couple of years ago. Uh, question, doesn't Tom Allen? I, I do. I've said this a lot. I, I think Tom needs to calm down on the sidelines. He's got to – the head coach has got to remain in the game I mean, you can get excited for a second, but you need to be thinking two plays ahead all the yeah. time, all the time, all the time. You, you don't have time to get excited uh, as when you're the guy. Uh, you you got to be thinking next. So all that time that you're excited, that's that's lost time prepping for what's going on to me. Uh, yeah. Easy to say maybe, but again, <laughs> the head guy, whether it's the DC, OC, or the head coach, you can't be jumping around and you know all the time. Stay focused. Stay in the game. Let's plan. You should be planning for the next two plays. Yeah, everybody, everybody's different. I mean, there are so many different ways to skin a cat, and you know you do see some coaches who are uh, more electric on the sidelines, and others who you know you remember Tony Dungy. They could be up forty or down forty. Yeah. And, you you wouldn't know the difference. I mean, with Tom no. Ken, but I think that that's one of the things that makes Tom who he is. And I oh, absolutely. I think, I think the players like it. Now, if it if it screws up his ability to make calls during a game, and, I, and there have been times where I've thought, "What in the hell is he thinking?" On you know, third downs, fourth downs, what have you. Um, but. I you know I, I like Tom the way he is. Yeah, I, I I do too, and I think that that is needed. I I agree with you. I think it's needed because you're right. That is part of why he's a, a really really good defensive coach. Right, right, and you and look, he's not having to call the offense. He's got Walt Bell worrying about that. Defensive coaches tend to be guys who have, whose hair is on fire. Most of the time, same same with uh, 
special teams. So I don't think that's the problem. I think the problem is they just they were just battered last year. They didn't have a quarterback. Uh, and offensively, they were ob- obviously putrid. I think they had what more than one touchdown in one game or something like that. I mean, some they averaged they averaged like one point one touchdowns. Not even one point one. It was probably less because probably less. Yeah. In conference play, I think they scored nine touchdowns. Yeah, that's that's um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Pathetic. That's pathetic. <laughs> I mean, that's laughable. That's yeah, like the was... old days. It was it was awful, and but I you know I keep going back to the the cloak cloak of secrecy. I get it, I get it. Illinois has got nothing. They know nothing about what's going on with Indiana. They have hell. We don't know, so they don't know who the quarterback is going to be. They can scout for both of them, which is fine. They have no idea what the offense is going to be because it's a new OC. I mean, you can do like me and just guess it's going to be a fast pace, no huddle, quick, quick, bang, bang, bang type of offense. That's what I think. Uh, you got DJ Matthews back healthy um, in that old uh, role of the uh, the quick hit uh, uh, receiver. And da- uh, Donovan McCulley, that's going to be interesting to see yeah. what he does. This dude, he's six foot five, man. What what defensive back is there that can go up bigger higher than he can to get get to a ball? Yeah, um, he can run with the he can run after he catches. And there's going to be a lot of guys making business decisions. You you would have to think when you're six five and as big as he is, uh, you you're going to have DBs thinking, oh hell no. I, absolutely. What's up next for you? Uh, what are you doing? Well, I'm going out to Colts camp. Uh, today and tomorrow um i've got that gretzky thing going the 23rd and uh i've got a couple okay. of, a couple of interesting ideas i'm talking with uh, jeff smullion um who is uh no he was you know so he sold ms communications he's the guy who started sports radio radio sports talk in this town i mean what you do what everybody else does i mean you owe it you owe a debt of gratitude to Jeff Smolian because before Jeff Smolian came along with the fan in New York, there was no sports talk. So uh, I'm going to do kind of an exit interview uh, with a guy who is a, a, a giant in the business. I've got a couple of other ideas, but for the most part, Colts and a couple other things, and we'll stay busy.